Where is God's heaven? Robert Jastrow told he knew. And who was Robert Jastrow, you may ask? He was one of the world's best-known scientists with outstanding credentials. He was the founding director of NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies, the director of the Mount Wilson Institute, and the author of God and the Astronomers. He was also the author of the disturbing book entitled Until the Sun Dies. Dr. Jastrow believed that the evidence for God is all around, and current theories about the nature of the universe point to his existence. But he said that most scientists do not like the notion of God's existence and are distressed when they are confronted with it. However, he believed that it cannot be denied nor avoided. He said that the evidence for creation point to a single creative act taking place by a force of unimaginable power. And here is why he believed. In an interview with Christianity Today, Jastrow said, Astronomers now find they have painted themselves into a corner because they have proven by their own methods that the world began abruptly in an act of creation to which you can place the seeds of every galaxy, every star, every planet, every living thing in this cosmos and on the earth. And they have found that all this happened as a product of forces they cannot hope to discover. That there are what I or anyone would call supernatural forces at work is now, I think, a scientifically proven fact. Scientists know that galaxies are moving away from us at a tremendous rate of speed. The farther out they are, the faster they go, even posing the speed of light. The only explanation, just to believe, is a gigantic explosion which he believed was caused by God. In his book, he said that most scientists contend for a closed universe. In other words, they believe that there is an endless recreating and that creation is merely part of the cycle which never ends. Jastrow did not believe that. He contended that God was the force that started the whole ball of earth spinning. If enough mass were out in space, then it is conceivable that the theory of continuous creation might be plausible. But according to Jastrow, there just is not enough mass out there. Rather than grapple with the implications, he said, they try to ignore it. Continuing the scientist and said, it is an interesting psychological fact in effect. We have proven the existence of God if you do not watch your language. A layman will put it that way, and I like to put it that way because it is humbling. It exposes certain weaknesses in the structure, and out of those weaknesses, as was always the case, come great new advances. Robert Jastrow, a man with a brilliant academic background, was seeing an old thing in a new way through the lens of modern and powerful telescope in observable universe. David, the shepherd boy, a mature astronomer of Israel, said it 3,000 years ago. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of His hands. The farther we prove into space, the more data is revealed, pointing to the creative act of God. And that was proven by the Hubble Ultra Deep Field Study when scientists took a peep in a small patch of the entire sky about the size of one square millimeter piece of paper held one meter away, or like a grain of rice in a closed loop, and equal to roughly 126 million of the total area of the sky. The image is oriented so that the upper lip corner points toward north minus 46.4 degrees on the celestial sphere. The Hubble Ultra Deep Field is an image of a small region of space in the constellation Fornak, containing an estimated 10,000 galaxies and their distances stretch out into space for more than 10 billion light years away. And just imagine, it is only within a little patch of the empty sky. And that great creator God was the one mentioned by Moses in the book of Genesis. In fact, some alarming discoveries have come to light in recent years, such as the black holes of space, where time actually stops that lead to Paul Min to conclude there is an awful lot that we do not know out there and it is conceivable that at a point where time and space seem to stop and the laws of physics will no longer apply is where the actual throne room of God's heaven may be found and that is eternity a place beyond time who knows but grasping a small measure of the vastness of space and the finiteness of man leads me to conclude that God has revealed to us something of His glory 
and is concerned for us through the pages of the Bible that we will never know otherwise. Taking God at His word based on the certainty of what God has already revealed is the only rational way to go. The Bible never attempts to prove God's existence. It begins simply by stating, In the beginning, God. Now we can still say, And in the conclusion, God. For He knows neither age nor weariness, that He has appointed a time that all humanity will ever live in this planet without any exemption, either He believed or denied that there is a God who caused this unimaginable power of creation will one day stand before that throne. And that's an absolute truth. And the question is, are you ready to meet your God? For the Bible says, And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne. And books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the book. Anyone whose name was not found written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. That is the dilemma, my friend. The one who sits upon the throne has appointed a time of reckoning. And who can stand in the presence of his great power and calling? No one. Not even one, my friend. Now, if you think you can stand in the basis that you are good, that is bad news for you. Because Jesus said, No one is good except God alone. All of us fall into one category. We are all sinners and a people with inability to live up to God's standard of perfection and are bound to eternal damnation in hell. But the good news is this, the one who sits upon that throne, Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That is the great solution of the holy and just God, that He led His only begotten Son to walk upon this earth, to live a holy and perfect life, and make the ultimate sacrifice for our sin, so that by accepting His grace and the free gift of salvation through faith, we can stand justified and assured of forgiveness by the shedding of His precious blood upon that throne. Now God did everything in His power for us to be saved from that horrible place of torment, and your part is to acknowledge that you are a sinner, and that you need a Savior by accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. For anyone who call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Then confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead. You will be saved. And that is my friend. Is that amazing that the Creator of the universe and the cosmos and everything in it has a great plan to save you even before the foundation of the world began? He care about you, and by His great love, He lived an unimaginable life of suffering just to win you back by His side and live with Him through eternity. Now you may pray this prayer with me. God, creator of the universe and everything in it, thank you for sending your Son Jesus and let Him leave His glorious throne in heaven to offer his life as a ransom for my sin. I confess that I am a sinner and ask for forgiveness from all the sin I have committed since the day of my childhood until today. I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior and Lord. And from this day on, I surrender my whole life to you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit as I live to do your will. Thank you. In Jesus' name, Amen.